Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you with another review. This week, I checked out Outlaw of Gore, also known as Gore 2. And this 1988 film was directed by John Cardos and stars Urbano Barbini and Rebecca Faraci and Jack Palance, among others, of course. The story of this movie takes place after Gore 1, which is kind of like a John Carpenter style movie where someone's teleported to another world and then saves the world and is teleported back. And so with this one, he is on Earth and he's teleported again to Gore with his friend this time. And he's like super excited to be there again. He's like, oh, my, my girl is here. Everyone loves me here. This is great. And so he, you know, finds the princess, hits up the king, stays at the palace and that type of stuff. However, there is an evil queen involved and she wants to take power for herself and then frame our main character for it. What will happen though? Well, you have to watch the movie and find out. All right, so let's discuss this film. Well, with this one, it does follow kind of everything you expect from the first one, Gore. And so it's just kind of like this sword and sorcery type of thing going on in outer space on a different planet. And so they have, you know, all kind of the fanciful costumes, which are good. Some guys have really good hats. I like the main character's costume. It was okay, I guess, just very kind of like barbarian-esque with like the, the one strap. But he has a little person as his buddy in this one. And he has like kind of the same costume, except, you know, he's much shorter. So it's kind of like a mini me situation going on, which I don't know, it just adds kind of a charm to it as well. So if you like the costumes and kind of the world of the first one, it appears all in this one again. Other than that, it does just kind of follow that corny aspect of, you know, this type of movie. And I would say probably with this one, I laughed about four times just because of the corny lines that they were saying. And they just come out of like nowhere sometimes. They're very kind of stand out. So I don't know. I'll show you one here. No, Kevin! Stop, it's poison! <laughs> How do you know? So that was just one. But like I said, there's maybe four out of this, you know, one hour, 30 minute movie. So there's not that many, but you do get at least a few laughs out of this one. Also, this movie gets right into it. I would say it's probably about the 10 minute mark or before the 10 minute mark that we find ourselves on gore, which is good if you like that, you know, aesthetic and that world, you get right into it. I did think it kind of hurt the characters though, because I had no idea who this main character was. I have seen gore, I'm sure for maybe like, I don't know, five years ago or something, I saw it. And so I didn't remember anything about any of the characters. And so I didn't know the princess was in love with the main character. The father really liked him and whatnot. And his little buddy just shows up and there. I'm just like, oh, OK, I, I totally forgot that in the first one. And so all of that stuff is in there. Again, it hurts the characters. But if you just want to see that world, then, yeah, you're set for that. So it is what it is. And that brings me to what doesn't work with this film. Well, where should I start? Let's see. This is a sequel, so you do have to see the first one. Like I said, they don't tell you anything about the characters or their relationships. And they don't even have like a, a backstory or anything. Like it would have been so much more useful to get a little bit of a backstory, whether it's the main character talking in a bar, telling their friend this crazy story that they had or whatnot. So unless you've seen the first one or at least seen it, you know, relatively recently, I probably wouldn't press play on this one because you'll just be kind of lost, I would say. On top of that, if you've seen the first one, you know all about the costumes and they have very kind of like cardboard looking swords, at least for the extras, they have very cardboard looking swords. And so the costuming and, and props are not the best. They are very serviceable, but if you've seen other, you know, sword and sorcery movies, they usually have a better quality, so if you are just looking for that quality, it's it's not really there in this one. Furthermore, with this movie, the soundtrack can get distracting at times. I think there's like one conversation where the music changes dramatically, like four times in this conversation. First it's, you know, energetic, then it's sad, then it's intense, and then back to energetic. And it's just such a weird kind of way of editing or composing this conversation where again it's not the most exciting thing just two people talking right so yeah it's kind of odd that way so that's in there not to mention also they are some story kind of holes in this one for example you know something happens and the princess gets captured 
And so she is put into like gladiatorial battles, but she keeps winning them. And even though like the villainess has clearly killed people before, we've seen it on screen. She like refuses to kill the princess, and you're just like, well, I don't know what you're expecting then. Of course, she's keeping her around so that you know the the main hero will have someone to save. But yeah, it just seemed like a big plot hole. What else? Oh, with the main character, especially at the beginning, this was a big thing. They say his name like a million times. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. Every sentence his name is said, Cabot or something like that. And it's just like, Cabot, oh, come here. It's Cabot. Everyone, it's Cabot. Oh, it's Cabot. Oh, Cabot, what are you doing? And oh my gosh, you hear this name like a hundred times within the first 20 minutes. So there's some things like that where you just kind of question like, what were they thinking at some points? I know they're thinking, you know, this is gore too, right? Same stuff, different day. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's odd. So who would I recommend this film for? Well, I would say only press play if you've seen the first one because, again, they don't tell you anything about it. And even then, only if you've seen it recently, right? So that you do actually remember who these characters are and whatnot. I think overall, probably a downgrade from the first one. So if that sounds like something you want to watch, check it out. But, again, I wouldn't just press play randomly on this one. As for a rating, well, I think Leo actually reviewed the first one, and he gave it a 3. And this time, I'm going to give it a 3, too. I think it's a little bit generous, but uh, yeah, it's very much of a meh movie. So yeah, a 3. And with that being said, I think that's all I wanted to say. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.